I'm not here to write stories I've seen a million times. I'm here to write stories I haven't seen a million times. If you only had three rules in which to guide your screenplay, mm -hmm. what writing rules would those be? Make sure, make sure that all the characters are distinctive from each other and have their own distinctive way of speaking and know what they care about, know what they want, know, know them. Write them as, as people, not as um, generic cab driver, generic any, whatever, anything. Um, tell a story that pays off in a meaningful way. And not just for the main character, but try and have it pay off in an emotionally satisfying way for a variety of your characters. Um, and, um, and have something fresh in it, fresh and, fresh and meaningful, so that it isn't something you've seen a million times. I'm, I'm not here to write stories I've seen a million times. I'm here to write stories I haven't seen a million times. And, uh, and that doesn't mean it can't be inspired by the tradition I write in. And it's fun, like for instance in Space Command, all of the Space Command personnel are named after famous science fiction writers I grew up reading. So there's Simak and Sturgeon and Bradbury and you know, Le Guin and, and so forth. And that's very fun. And the funny thing was, at one point I had a character named Murray Leinster after a science fiction writer from the 50s. And, uh, and I cast Victor Manso, who's Latino, and I thought, well, he doesn't look like a Murray Leinster. So then I had to think of a science fiction or fantasy writer, a Latino one. And finally, I remembered Jorge Luis Borges, who's a great fantasist uh, of, from Argentina. And so I named the character Jorge Borges. And oh, uh, so that was fun. That was very fun. So, uh, but I just, uh, you know, I, but I would just make sure it has to be original, truthful, the characters have to be vivid, and it has to, it has to take us to an emotional place that's satisfying. Those are the, those are the big ones. And uh, I mean, a film can have a lot of drawbacks. For instance, no one script is gonna be everything to everybody. You know, you can't, like for instance, you might wanna write something about transgender rights at some point, and maybe, maybe you'll put in a transgender character in one script, or maybe ultimately you wanna write about that in a big way, that, that might be the, the, the main drive of your story. But again, I don't ever write message things. You know, you have to have a story that's engaging. Elaine will start with themes. I rarely do. I usually start with a character or an actor that I want to work with or it, it can be almost anything. It can be almost anything. And, uh, but I always arrive at the same place, which is a, a story that I want to tell. So just as there's the Bechdel test, mm -hmm. is there a message test so that we yeah, as filmmakers, sure. okay. Yeah, you, you know, you know that, that, that it's a message uh, film if when the lights come up, everyone's gone. You know, so, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I mean Rod, Rod Serling used to be very cognizant. He had a lot to say, uh, you know, politically and socially, but he knew that you had to create characters that the, the, the people cared about. Like when Burgess Meredith is the last man, I don't know if you care about him, you're engaged by that man and, uh, and you feel sorry for him, what happens to him. You know, it's, uh, I mean, I don't know any really good writers who, who don't put the focus on character. In science fiction, you know, whether it's Deckard in Blade Runner or whomever, you know, there's people that you care about. Uh, Ripley in Aliens, I mean, great example. Uh, you have to, there's, there's so many films and TV shows where you don't care about the people and you don't, and it's just forgettable. It's just forgettable. So it's uh, really important to, to do that. And, uh, you know, and, and, and again, I'm not here to change everyone's opinion. My goal is to, get, is to convince people to be compassionate and to convince people to be, that, that the power of love is important, that we're, we are united by our commonality far more than we're divided by our opinions, you know. And so that's what I would urge people to recognize, you know. And uh, so that's, I mean, my big message is compassion. And uh, that's a good message, I think, to have. Why do we care about Ellen Ripley? We care about Ripley because she's, she, well, first of all, in Aliens, she cares about someone other than herself. She's trying to save that little girl, even if it, she dies. She's willing to sacrifice herself, but also she's the smartest person in that movie. She's the most competent person in that movie. That story is about her where she starts traumatized and step by step by step to save other people. She has to take control and command. She knows what she's doing. And the fact, and, and, it, and again, it's a great marriage between character and actress because Sigourney Weaver is able to play a powerful woman where she's no less feminine. She's just competent. 
and uh, and you believe every single thing she does in that movie. It's terrific. It's one of my favorite films. It's a great film. How was she received? How was that character received at that time? Well, it's very funny when Alien came out. You know, originally uh, Ripley was a male character, and they changed to a female character, and. Uh, and I thought it was great, but my brother Jim, my, my brothers grew up in Orange County, I grew up in LA, when my parents divorced when I was three, and my brother Jim said, oh man, that woman, she was such a bitch. He was like so traditional. Now I think he'd have a different opinion. He was young back then, but it's like he was from a much more conservative background, and it was like, you know, so he was like um, riled up about having a, a woman character that strong, but I thought it was just great. I, I loved it from the first. So, and that was what, 83? 79. 79, Alien, oh, sorry. Alien was okay. 79. Uh, Aliens was, uh -huh. 70, was 86. Okay. But the fun part was, um, uh, before the pandemic, 2019, I heard that there was a high school, there was a high school in, East, in, in um, uh, Bergen, New Jersey, and it was, the, the art teacher and the English teacher had an idea that instead of doing like, you know, uh, Brigadoon or Oklahoma for their high school play, they would do Alien the entire movie. And they built everything from scratch, the alien's uh, suit, the, the 15 foot space jockey, the space suits, the chest burster, everything. And they thought they'd just fly under the radar that no one would hear about it, just the parents would come see it. But then of course it went viral. So Ridley Scott um, uh, put up some money and they were able to put on a, another performance. And they were in the eye of the media storm. And so I flew to New Jersey, uh, to North Bergen, New Jersey to spend the day talking to the students. So because I knew they were gonna get a lot of promises from Hollywood and I knew those would all be false probably and would fall flat and their hearts would get broken. And I wanna say, here's how it works. And if you come to LA, I'm happy to, to guide you and you can all be members of my round table wherever you are and so forth. And so I spent the day with them. And then as a surprise, uh, Sigourney Weaver showed up and she hung out with the kids and she introduced the play and it was just wonderful. I actually posted the entire play on Mr. Sci-Fi oh, and it's okay. great when the chest burster comes out and there's blood everywhere. It was wonderful. And, and I said to them, I said to the kids, this is Hollywood. What you're doing right here is Hollywood. Hollywood is wherever you're creating something that has meaning, something that you gave it your really best effort. And, uh, and it was a, I'm so glad I went, it was a wonderful experience. That's great. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Maybe we'll put a link below this it. video. <laughs> it's really fun. Awesome. Well, people can watch, you know, the first hour of Space Command. They can watch the bonus episode. They can watch that. They can watch my uh, Sulu Star Trek episode, all on Mr. Sci-Fi. Sure. And you huge... and Elaine. Yeah. 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 Talking. It's, just, it's super fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's enjoyable. And then we get to see your dogs, well, too. I, I love the fact I get to have my own network. I mean, mm -hmm. I wasn't planning that. I just had lunch with Glenn Mazzara who was a friend of mine who was the showrunner on Walking Dead, and we were having lunch, and he said, you know, you know so much about science fiction, you should have your own YouTube channel. And I thought, good idea. And so, so I called it Mr. Sci-Fi and just started it up. I didn't do anything really to promote it. Now, as I said, we've had millions of hits and uh, closing in on 100,000 subscribers, and it was just like, great, because I can, I can do something short or something that takes a lot more effort, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really fun, because I'm, I'm so, so enthusiastic about science fiction. I've loved it since I was a kid. And Sulu, why should we care about Sulu? Well, when I was a kid watching Star Trek, Sulu was my favorite character. And because George Takei was just so great and he was so smart and so competent and loyal and honorable and just wonderful. And he never got the great Sulu episode. And I then found out that there were a group of fans in upstate New York making their own Star Trek episodes. And Walter Koenig, who played Chekhov, was flying up there to um, make an episode about his character. And Dorothy Fontana, who story edited the original Star Trek, had written that script. So I con And my friend Michael Reeves, back when they were gonna bring Star Trek back as a series in the 70s, came up with this great Sulu story. And so I contacted the guys in upstate New York and I said, listen, Michael and I both wrote for Star Trek The Next Generation, and Michael's an Emmy winner. Uh, would you be interested in doing this episode? And they said, sure. And I said, but I want to direct it. And they said, fine. And, um, and so then I went to George and I, I typed up the outline of what the story was going to be. And I said, uh, look, you, you never got the great Sulu episode you, de you deserved. And uh, I said, this is it. And so he said, I'm in. And, I, and Michael and I wrote the script and it took me six months to prep. And uh, it took a solid year. We shot, we shot it in a matter of two weeks, and then it was a solid year of editing and visual effects. Had 700 visual effects shots. And when we were shooting, I said to George, next year, you and I will be on in Japan 
speaking to the World Science Fiction Convention and screening this episode, after which we'll answer questions and you'll be answering in Japanese because he's fluent in Japanese and I'll be answering in English. And I said a year after that we'll be nominated for the Hugo, which is the top award in science fiction and all of that happened. Oh, wow. And uh, so because it was, I'm, I'm proud, I'm pr very, very proud of that episode and it's every, every, I gave every bit of everything I knew how to do in that to write and direct and, and exactly produce that. And my contract was that no one could touch a frame of it. I had total um, directorial say. And so it's exactly what I want it to be. And as I say, we cast Christina Moses and she's phenomenal. Every take was just gorgeous. And, I'm, and I've worked with her since. She's in Space Command now, as well as being in a middle, million little things on ABC. Um, but she, uh, and she'll be in Magic Time and, and some of the other projects we're doing. So um, it's fun. You build an ensemble of friends who, uh, who you love to work with. How much of what you write is trying to be original versus trying to give the audience what they want? Well, I'm pleased when the audience gets value from what I do, but that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I have something I want to say, something I have experienced or something I've observed that's meaningful to me. And uh, I, it's so... And, and there's just so many wonderful pieces. I mean, the lovely part about what I do, because of it's science fiction, I get to create a universe. And that's the thing that science fiction brings that other genres don't tend to. If, if you see a story set in the modern day, it's just about those people. It's about that story. But if you tell a really good science fiction story, the universe is a separate character in a way. Like, for instance, Blade Runner... You can do stories in the Blade Runner universe. You can do stories in the Star Wars universe or Star Trek universe. And that's extremely beguiling. And I love that. And it allows you also to work with um, visual design. And because I was a painting, sculpture, and graphic arts major, I have a very strong visual sense. And I also know the history of science fiction design. I mean, I think it's incredibly cool and unexpected that we have big silver spaceships now, thanks, thanks to Elon Musk. They look exactly like the ones I saw in When Worlds Collide or on the book, book covers from my childhood. And that's just a thrill. Um, I love bringing a science fiction reality to the screen. It's, um, it just used so, so many of my, of my skills and enthusiasms. Do you think you'll be going up to space in one of the various I don't uh, know. carriers? <laughs> okay. We'll see what happens. It's There's not, a few to choose from. It's not something that, <laughs> that I'm eager to do, mm -hmm. but it's not something I would mind doing either. Uh, but I do know personally know astronauts and uh, scientists at NASA and JPL and all of that stuff's really exciting. So uh, there's a member of our roundtable who's a science fiction writer and his day job is he drives the Mars rover. <laughs> oh, that's a cool and job. And he has two watches. One is on Earth time and one is on Mars time. Nice. Which is just super cool. Yeah. Sorry I'm late. I was, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. I hit a crater. Oh, wait. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah wrong watch. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, okay. very fun.